Hello everyone. In this class, we are going to discuss about the friction. As so far you guys know, we have had similar examples that had friction. Friction is always opposite to the motion that is going on or trying to move, opposite to the direction the object is trying to move on. And the surface is creating this resistance or the friction force acting on the object that is parallel to the surface but opposite, okay? With that, again, why we have this friction? That oppose the relative motion between these two surfaces. Here we have the box or the object on it and the surface. They are not fine, smooth surface. If we go microscopic view, they have bumps and hills right here. Because of that relative motion, trying to move on, still not yet in motion, or when it is in the motion, we have that opposite resistance, the friction force we are going to discuss on. And in the class, you guys will see two types of friction forces, static and kinetic. People say it is the dynamic kinetic friction. Reason. Whenever these two objects are not yet in motion, stationary relative to one to the other, we will have the static friction right here. Still, we have the situation surface and the object on it, force of gravity acting on the object by the surface on the object, the perpendicular one, the normal force, Fn, force of normal. And also this lady is putting a force forward, that is the pushing force F. But still, even though the object is not yet in motion, we will still have that static friction, Fs. And when these two objects are in motion, sorry, the object and the surface, they are relatively in motion. When the object is in motion relative to the surface, Still, we have that force of gravity, normal force, forward applied force. Now we have the friction force changing from static to the kinetic friction. The free body diagram, the force diagrams will look like the same only situation before the motion friction is static. When it is in the motion, it will be kinetic. We will talk about how to find how big these static and the kinetic friction in order to solve any problem in hand. So if the objects are relatively stationary, we have the static friction. Here is the formula. Static friction equals, could be smaller or equal. I will talk about this equal sign because the static friction could have a maximum number. Okay, mu s mu s is the coefficient in any given problem you will have the static friction coefficient mu s given we will do examples and this n is your familiar force the normal force f n and again static friction force no applied force it could be zero and again you can increase the applied force up to a maximum you can have the static friction. If the static friction maximum is passed, you are pushing harder than the maximum static force, we can have the dynamic situation. Now the object is in motion. Even with that, we can calculate. Now it is not less than or equal, it is just an equal constant number for the friction kinetic when the object is in motion mu k kinetic friction or the dynamic friction coefficient and n is the normal force f n okay now so far in order to solve these problems we have two formulas and again this guy that has a maximum the equal sign f s max and 
They look similar, the normal force right here, two coefficients, and you will see this table in your textbook as well, depending on any version of the te textbook, you will have different versions, but same idea in any surface for a given surface relative to the other. Steel on steel, glass on glass, wood on leather, relative motion, that's where we talk about the friction force, the motion, dynamic number, kinetic friction coefficient is smaller than the static friction. So the static friction is higher than the resistance you are getting, the friction you are getting when the object is in motion. Okay, now if I talk about an example, here is the same box that lady was pushing and when this lady is not applying any force, the friction force is going to be zero. No force applied, no resistance, done. So right here, I have on the x-axis, the pushing force, the applied force, and the friction force on the y-axis. When there's no any force applied, zero, the friction is zero. If this lady is applying a force of five newtons, the object is not yet in motion, zero acceleration, zero velocity, because the static friction is opposed, equal and opposite, canceling out five newtons applied, five newtons static friction. That's why the object is not yet, yet in motion. No net force to make this object moving. The lady increases that force to a 10 newton. Still, we are not yet there for the maximum static force the box is not yet in motion. The forces are balanced. The lady is pushing at, pushing at 10 and this one right here, static friction, 10 Newtons. They canceled, no net force. The lady is increasing it to a 15 Newtons, bigger applied force, but still the static friction is keeping it up. The object is not yet in motion. Forces canceling out, no net force, but the static friction, let's say that 15 Newtons was the maximum. If we know the static coefficient, if we know the normal force, we can calculate how much is the Fs max done. So let's say that is the maximum the friction force static could have if this lady go 16 newtons, a little bigger than the static maximum, the object is going to start moving. There we go. If this lady is pushing bigger than the static maximum, now the object is going to start moving. The friction is going to be kinetic, kinetic or the dynamic friction. Still, the object is in motion. The pushing force is bigger than the friction force, the resistance, now we have a net force along the forward direction. That's why the object can move, okay? So we will discuss further these details, examples in the class.